Isn't this a good group of kids up here? Let's give them a round of applause. Amen. Well, kids, this morning, I'm going to play a game with you. How many of you have ever heard of the game, What Would You Do? Raise your hand if you've ever heard of that. All right. Now, Ryan, I want you to go pick up a balloon. Justin, pick up a balloon. Gunner, pick up a balloon. Isaiah, pick up a balloon. Jacob, pick up a balloon. How many kids we have with balloons? One, two, three, four, five. I need three more. Sarah Rook. Sarah Beth. J.D. And I want you guys with balloons to come stand right down here in front of the church, okay? Right down here. Don't read what's on your balloon. Don't read it. You got it. All right, Sarah Beth, can you come stand down here with these boys for me? Now, do not read what's on that balloon. Now, on your balloon, there's a statement, and it's a situation, okay? And you never know in your life when something's going to blow up in your face, okay? You never know. So pick up that paper, and I want you to read it to the people and tell me exactly how you would respond to this situation if it were you. You find out that someone was t talking trash about you. Your re reputation. reputation is ruined. What do you do? Um, so if somebody's talking trash about you, they talk about you on Facebook, they gossip about you, how do you respond to that as a Christian? Um, just ignore it. Okay, that's good. You can ignore it. What else can you do for that person? Pray for them. Amen. That's a good answer. Amen. Good. Pray for your enemies. So that means I'm going to pray for you. All right, Ryan. Now let's pick up that paper. I want you to read it for the people and tell me how you'd respond. Your birthday party was canceled because of bad weather. What do you do? Just move it now you've got to put this thing up to your mouth. It ain't turned up. Just move it inside. Move it inside. Have it at the church, amen? Now, do you let that depress you and, and become like a, just a bad kid and be mean to your parents and have a bad mood? No. Amen. All right, did you hear that? Where, where's your mama at? All right. All right, Gunner. Let's read that thing. You just got a text, from, a text message from your friend, that, and they gave you bad news. They, what do you do? All right, so you get a text message, you get an email, you get a telegraph for some of our older people, and uh, you get bad news. Somebody's died, somebody's done this or that. Well, how do you respond to bad news, Gunner? He doesn't know. Somebody shout it out. How would you respond to that? Pray. What do you do when there's bad news? You turn to the Lord, you trust in Him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. Amen? Good. All right, Justin, hold that thing up here for me. Read that thing. Someone asked you how to be saved. What do you tell them? Ooh, somebody asked you how to be saved. What do you say to that person, Justin? You have to ask Christ to be your Savior and uh, forgive you of all your sins. Amen. So the Holy Spirit moves on you. You ask Him to forgive you. Amen. Good. We had two people get saved at Bible school, and that's awesome. Amen. All right, Isaiah. You got caught doing something wrong. What do you do? You get caught with your hand in the cookie jar. What do you do, Isaiah? Somebody caught you. Ask the Lord for forgiveness. And then you ask them for forgiveness too, right? Confess your sins one to another. Amen. Good. Good job. All right, J.D. Life just blew up in his face. This is the worst problem to have right here. Your girlfriend breaks up with you. What do you do? You have a girlfriend, J.D.? Your mom? Okay. What do you do when your girlfriend breaks up with you? This, this is a real thing that kids deal with. It's the end of the world. Go find another one. Go. Hey! Amen. And Titus, can you come here with that balloon? I'm going to pop it. That's a cute kid. Now, J.D., right here beside you. This is a good girl right here, okay? All right, Sarah. You just turned 50, and you're sad about being old. What do you do? You just turned 50. You're sad about being old. What do you do? Look on the bright side. 
Look on the bright side. Just get over it, amen? Get over the hill because you're already over the hill. All right, Sarah. Last but not least, life just blew up in your face. What does that say? Your boss yells at you. You're not getting to work on time. What do you do? Um, if your boss come up to you and told you, and this has happened to me, so I'm speaking from experience. Uh, what do you do when you're not on time? What do you, what do you say to that, that boss? I need to work. I need to work. Do not fire me. Amen. Now, now kids, I've done this to kind of show you that life can happen in an instant. Girlfriend breaks up with you. Somebody dies. Something's sad. Something's bad. Your birthday party gets canceled. Or you turn 50 and then you're just really sad about it. And it just kind of pops. These situations pop. But you know, the first psalm in the Bible says this. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the ways of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law he does meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water, bringing forth fruit in due season. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Listen, when you're planted in the Lord and you're close enough to God to know how to respond to bad things immediately, you need to be close enough to God so that when something bad happens to you, you already know how to act and how to, how to be a Christian. Amen? Did we learn anything this morning? Be ready to respond like a Christian, okay? Let's give these kids a round of applause. Yeah, just clean it up. Hey, Emma. Hey, Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, still need some help in the choir. Y'all come on and help us in the choir this morning.
Oh, thank the Lord. Thank God. Let's all stand together all over the house. Sing that last verse again. There's a few of you that's glad you're saved. Just a few of you stood up and began to worship. What's wrong with the rest of the church this morning? If you've been rescued from the pits of the damned, you've been saved, resurrected by His power, washed in the living blood of the Lamb. Thank God, got the Holy Ghost living inside of you. Somebody ought to shout, give Him praise this morning in His house. Woo! If you'd have done that first thing when you woke up, imagine what you'd have felt like now. Just praising the Lord a little bit. He deserves our praise. Isn't he wonderful? He is wonderful. Can you say Jesus is wonderful? Well, yes, he is. Hallelujah. So glad that you're here, and I'm glad that I'm here. But more than that, I'm glad that Jesus is here in our presence today. I got good news for you. He's still saving people. We had two saved in Bible school this week, and it seems like for about the past four weeks, we've had people give their heart and life to Jesus Christ. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. He's so, so good to us. And, um, and if you're here today and you don't know the Lord, our prayer is that you come to know Christ as Lord of your life today. That's our prayer. That's our plea. And we love you. You might say, nobody loves me. Oh, the Lord loves you. And not only that, God's people love you too. And we want to help you today. And if you're here and you're a first-time visitor, could you just throw your hand up and say, hey, that's me. It's my first time right back here on the back row. God bless you, sister. Right here in this section right here, middle ways, Brother Cliff. Anyone else, first-time visitor, if you can, just keep your hand up a minute. Well, these guys, they, they get a little older. They can't see as good. Anyone else, first-time visitor, first-timer? How about a second time, second time I've been here? Any se right here, God bless you. Thank you for being here today. Right here, Kinesa. Good to have you, sweetheart. Been through a tough time, had not you? God's going to help you today. God's going to help you, sweetheart. Second row right here, guys. First row, rather. Second time visitor. Are you glad you saved today? Amen. As our ushers come, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Kind Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful day you've blessed us with, for the beautiful sunshine, God, for the wonderful building that you have built that we could come in and worship. And God, we praise you, Lord, for what we've already seen in this building. And God, thank you, Jesus, for your spirit living inside of us. And God, I pray that you save somebody today. God, help somebody today, whether it be here online, on television, radio. God, do a work, Lord. God, I pray you bless this offering and every part of this service. 
May we up, uplift the name above all other names, the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We ask this now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the sweet, sweet Holy Ghost Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people shout it. Amen. I've a home prepared where the saints abide Just over in the glory land And I long to be by my Savior's side Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land I'll join happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land. I am on my way to those mansions fair. Just over in the glory land, there to see God's grace and His glory share. Just over in the glory land. Just over. Just over in the glory land. What a joyful thought that my Lord I'll see. Just over in the glory land. And with kindred say there forever be. Just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land. I'll join. morning. By this time we'll dismiss all our kids to junior church, ages five to nine. throng I will shout and sing just over in the glory land glad hosannas to Christ the Lord and King just over in the glory standing and help us sing this down at the cross where my Savior died down where for cleansing from sin I cried there to my heart 
was the blood applied, singing glory to his name, singing glory to his name, glory to his name. Now I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory. just a little boy sitting on a piano bench playing just as I am during the invitation after the preacher had preached and God speaking to my heart making my way to an altar and asking God to forgive me of my sins and forgive me and he became Lord of my life that day and I'm thankful for the day that I got saved you don't have to be living out in sin you don't have to be doing some awful thing I was part of I was part of church I was part of the daily routine of church and still lost in my sins I'm thankful that the same God that convicted my heart and saved me a young boy is the same God that's still saving souls today I am so Drusly saved from sin. 
Jesus so sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in glory to his name Do you know how it feels to know something's missing and hear a still small voice you just keep dismissing? Do you know how it feels to be troubled inside to think just for you on a cross someone died? Do you know how it feels when he knocks to surrender? Have your sins washed away never to be remembered and know that it's real ain't it good to know how it feels and how does it feel to know you're a child of the king your heavenly father owns everything and how does it feel to know you are melted your tears start flowing the moment you felt it do you know how it feels yeah. to know you've been changed and it seems that the whole world has been rearranged do you know how it feels wherever you roam you still get the feeling you're not at home knowing heaven is real ain't it good to know how it does it feel to know you're a child of the King? Your heavenly Father owns everything. How does it feel to know you are loved by the one who created the stars of the heart is melted your tears start flowing the moment you felt it do you know how it feels just to know you've been changed and it seems that the whole world has been rearranged do you know how it feels wherever you how many of you go, remember that you day still get a feeling you're not at yeah. home knowing heaven is real ain't it good to know how does it feel to know you're a child of the King, your heavenly Father holds everything? How does it feel to know you are loved by the one who created the stars of the light? And how does it feel to know you're all right when you lay your head on your pillow each night?
for me when the redeemed are gathering in i'll be in that royal number when they call my name when they with a joyful sound, Lord, here I am. Well, here I am. second will be changed from here to there when we all join in and sing hallelujah to the king i'll cry with a joyful sound hey, Luke, sing that second verse again i want them to hear listen now we're gonna meet one here in a few days we'll blows the trumpet and we how many of you believe that in the house of the Lord? In this time, oh, in us, the second will be changed from here to there. Where there'll be no grief or pain, peace and joy shall ever reign. Home at last I shall proclaim, Lord, here I am. Well, here I am. I'm the one the shepherd left the fold and found. There were ninety and nine, but he left the fold to find one little lost man, and here I am. Well, I thought for sure we was going to have a meeting there for a minute. Bless you, sister. We have that mic there. God bless you. Honey. I just want to say this morning that I'm just bubbling over. You know, I thank the Lord so much. I think about when that dish. little boy asked his daddy, you know, somebody big as God, how can he fit in your heart. He said he came without sticking out. <laughs> well, you know, that's what's happening to me this morning. Amen. You know, while Lucas quits, keeps yes. singing them songs, the Spirit was dealing with my heart so much to get up and just thank him. You know, he's been so good to me. And sometimes, you know, when things happen and things come our way, you know, it gets a little hard to praise him and worship yeah. him. But we got some bad news on Mike's mama yesterday. She's got lung cancer and kidney cancer. And she's in the nursing home. But, you know, when we went and talked to her in ministry, you know, she just lifted her hands and praised the Lord. You know, so I believe with all my heart she's ready Amen. to go. But sometimes it takes something like that, you know, to really know 
that God is with you, that he loves you, and he'll always be with you. And I just thank him this morning for filling me up. Amen. Amen. Love you, sister. God bless you. What an encouragement that is. Amen. Are you glad to be here today? Amen. Would you turn with me to John chapter 10 this morning? John chapter 10. Boy, I'm telling you, it's already been a good service. John 10, if you can stand, and then look back at Isaiah 53, and we'll use one verse of Scripture there. But in John chapter 10, I want us to start looking at today in verse 7. And if you're there, say amen. amen. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the what? The door. And you know the door hinges on the cross. I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. And then he said what? I am the what? I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastor. The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Let me tell you right now, God didn't save you for you to have a miserable life. He didn't save you for that. He saved you that you might have an abundant life. Well, what's so abundant about being a Christian? Abundant mercy. Abundant grace. Abundant joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Some people walking around, they're all down in the mully grubs and just can't seem to find joy anywhere. And when you can't find joy anywhere, you might ought to check up and see where you are abiding in the faith. Because when you're abiding in the faith and you, you just stop for a minute and you look back where you were, where you are, and begin to dive into God's Word, you will have a spring of well of life springing up in you that's bubbling, bubbling, bubbling joy over in your heart, soul, and mind. He said, I've come that you might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Who's he talking to? He's talking to those who have accepted Christ as Savior, recognized him as the doorway to get from sin to salvation. And then he says, I am the good shepherd. Is he good to you? Let me tell you something. Even a sinner would have to say the Lord is good. You know why? Well, why should a sinner say that? Because they hadn't died and gone to hell yet. I'm the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. You know, 99.9% .9 of the time, the sheep give their life for the shepherd. But here the shepherd's giving his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling, and not the shepherd whose own sheep are not, seeth the what? The wolf coming. And leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hiring fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. But again, he says, I am the what? The good shepherd. Look to your neighbor and say, he's a good shepherd. And he says, and know my sheep and have known of mine. And then he says again in verse 15, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I'm skipping a little bit, but I want to just throw this in. And then also he says in verse 16, they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Now before, you, before you're seated, let me tell you that one fold, he's talking about Israel. He's talking about the nation of Israel. But then the Bible says he leadeth them out. 
He leadeth them out of the law into grace. And so he made a way for the goats of the world, who are the Gentiles, for them to be grafted in and to the sheepfold. It's very important that we understand that. And everyone that had claimed to be God, that had claimed to be the Christ, the anointed one before this time was a thief and a robber and was looking for some other religious way to get to heaven. Now I want to tell you, and I can't be no, no more plain than this, you will only go to heaven through and by the shed blood of Jesus Christ which took place on the cross at Calvary. There's no other way. No other way. Can you be seated? We've already prayed today. I'm going to catch you up real quick, and I'm going to preach two points. Sheep in danger. There are sheep in danger today. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 and verse 6, All we like sheep have gone astray, have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. This particular verse is telling us that we have an atomic nature that is prone to go our way instead of God's way. When you get born again, you crucify your flesh. You say no to the flesh. You say no to the carnal side of you. You say no, no, no. I'm going to follow the Spirit of God because in every single life, there will be two voices that will speak to you and that will be the Holy Spirit and the other will be the voice of your flesh. Not only do we see that, we talked about a flocking behavior and the sheep would come together and when they came together that they were protected. And you know what? When you come together, if you try to get yourself, I'm getting the, getting the cart in front of the horse here, but when you get yourself away from the, the fold of the banding together and the flocking of the sheep, you put yourself at risk. Risk for injury. Risk that you will not be able to resist the wiles of the wicked, the temptations and the lust of the flesh. But here, the more of the world that, that we have in our lives, the less that we will care about those around us. We studied how that the shorter the wool, the tighter the banding and the flocking together of the sheep would be. And we find in Scripture that wool represents the world. Matter of fact, have you ever heard the phrase, pulling the wool over their eyes? That's exactly what happens with sheep. Their, their wool gets too long, they can't see. Matter of fact, I, in studying this, I found a sheep that was lost for six years. Six years. And you ought to see that thing. It looked like a big pillar, a walking pillar. And the thing couldn't see, and they said, how did they catch it? And they said, he couldn't see. <laughs> Just snuck up behind him. You let your wool get too long, see what happens. You won't see things like the Bible sees it. You won't see things like the preacher sees it. You won't see things like the spiritual leadership of the church sees it. You let your wool get too long, you're going to find yourself in misery. If you'll find things sneaking up on you, you never thought could sneak up on you. Not only that, a following behavior. When sheep move, the rest will follow. We talked about where in eastern Turkey, 400 sheep died all at one time because one got scared and run off. We talked about a feeling behavior. Sheep have to have other sheep around for them to, to be at peace. Isn't it great when we come together in the house of God? Does that not give you peace knowing that, hey, I'm not alone in this thing? I've got peace one with another. I feel help, but, and I begin to think about how that some people some people go through times about they don't feel anything. Who cares how you feel? Well, I'm just not feeling nothing. That's your fault. That ain't God's fault. You've neglected the word of God. You've neglected being faithful to the house of God. You've neglected your prayer life. Listen, but even in times when you're doing all those things, there'll be a time where you just don't feel God like you once did. You know what that's called? A valley. That's why the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. 
probably hundreds of people over the years, I've been a pastor. They'll say, well, I just didn't feel nothing. I said, show me in the Bible where you're supposed to feel something. Show me. Well, I, I'm just not sure I'm saved. I didn't feel a lightning bolt. And I said, where did you see a lightning bolt in the Bible? You ever heard this stuff too? Listen, you are saved by grace through faith. Faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And for, for the poor part of our, our nature and our mental capacity, we've got, more comp- we've got more confidence in that Chevrolet or that Ford or that rice burner out in the parking lot than we do in the Holy Word of God. That's a shame. We're living in a world, y'all ain't clapping today. Now listen, don't clap for me, clap for the Word, clap for the Lord. That'll help you clap her, amen. I've learned over the years, I can preach with an amen or without one. It just takes a lot longer when there's not one. Amen, Brother Dwight. <laughs> a, preacher ain't, a preacher all by himself, he'll just sit down there and yell back, amen. There's an old preacher, his name, Connie Character. He was with the Free Will Baptist, and he was, he was one of the ones that went around like Brother Jim McComas did. And, and, and he would go in some of the driest churches and said he'd preach in these mountain churches and said they'd just be quiet and said they wouldn't say anything and said he'd get to preaching and he'd look in them old, them old you know, those old pine wood walls on them old churches. And he'd say, say amen, not. <laughs> well, if that not say amen, he couldn't get nobody else to. And sheep have, even though they have good vision, they have poor depth perception. You now I begin to think about that, Brother Kyle, and I begin to think about our depth perception spiritually and scripturally. When we begin to think, when, when I believe it was Paul that said, listen, we're not to focus on the temporal, but the eternal. We can't, we don't have that depth, spiritual depth perception because we only live in the now. Whenever it's God's people, we need to live more in the future. What awaits us in glory and in heaven? The fold of the sheep was a place of separation, supervision, and safety. And we talked about weak sheep. That's who's in danger. Weak sheep. You know, weak sheep have to do with what they're eating. More and more in science, we find out What we eat is how we'll perform in our daily activity. You eat donuts all day. You're going to have short-term energy burst. And then you're going to start creating this. Insulation. Getting ready for winter. Amen. And it, but what, what people don't see slowly over time, people eating biscuits and gravy and bacon, frying, unclean seven days, say amen. I mean, eating all this fatty stuff and little by little over time. You doctors say amen. If nobody else will, it creates a plaque in those arteries and build up in the heart. It's pumping harder. It's working harder to try to get us to be able to, to live. And, 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 it, and it puts stress on the body and on the mind. And that's where we have heart attacks and strokes and things like that because of what we're putting in our body. Spiritually speaking, what you put in your body, get this, what you put in your body will dictate how you respond to the things you face in life spiritually. We've got to be able to keep our spiritual arteries clean. We've got to exercise our faith every day. We've got to walk in righteousness. We've got to speak holy things and righteous things. And more there ain't nothing that gets me more upset than somebody that's complaining all the time. Somebody that's a belly aching. Somebody don't like this, and they don't like that. I mean, I'm t- good grief. Thank God you're even able to come to God's house. You could be in a nursing home. You could be down at the morgue. Thank God that you are able to come in and listen to the Word of God, worship God, and praise His holy name. 
And if you can't praise Him, it's because you've got some spiritual buildup in your life because of what you've been eating. What have you been eating? I remember when I was little, there was a little cartoon come on, and it'd say, you are what you eat. Remember that? There's been a few times in my life I just looked in the mirror and I looked like a big cheeseburger. <clears throat> I'm trying to look like celery. It ain't working out too good. See, sheep, when they have an, a lack of appetite, they're, they're, they're in trouble. They got symptoms. They, they, they're not something's wrong when we're not hungry for the word of God and when we're not thirsty for the Holy Spirit of God something is wrong with us we've allowed some sort of spiritual virus get in us listen how many of you ever had a stomach virus doesn't matter how good that ribeye steak is cooked and set down before you don't want to eat that get that away from me I don't want to see food smell food nothing and some people get a spiritual gag complex. They get and the preacher gets to preaching. Something they've been doing, they get nauseous. Makes them feel bad. I remember one time Braden, he, he was about probably five years old. And we'd went up, we'd went. <clears throat> and Crystal said after this trip, she said, I will never go to the state of Ohio again with kids. It was about a 12-hour drive where we was going. We went up with Brother Jim McComas, and we went up there, and we went out, and there was the, the Spencers was there, and, and I mean all these other high-name gospel artists, and Billy Fields was there, and <clears throat> we went to eat after the service, and when we did, <clears throat> we went into this, Brother Jim McComas, remind him of this, he took us to eat at a truck stop. We went to a truck stop. I mean, I'm telling you, it looked like one of them Hindu temples out on the front. Smokers everywhere, smoke going up. And we, we went in, and when we, and when we went, went in, they was baking bread in there, and something about that bread, and Braden went, Ugh. what's wrong with you? It's something stinks. It stinks. And most of the time, I'm the one that gets impatient. Crystal got impatient. I said, boy, that's going to be good. Got all these preachers and everybody waiting on us. Yeah. I'm about to be I'm, like that. And she, and she said, I'm telling you, you stop it right now. You better quit this. And I said, hey, let me just take him. I took him to the bathroom. You all right? No. I, them blue eyes look like they got electricity run to them. Watering up. He said, no. I'm not all right. And so I took him and I said, well, do something, put your shirt over, you know, he got some paper towels and he stuck over his nose and he, he come out and he sat down. And if you know Billy Fields, he had taken, I didn't see this, but he had taken napkins and rolled them up and he had them up, up each nostril. And then he had a napkin over it. Billy is sitting there, and of course, Braden's always been a talker, and all God's people said. Amen. I mean, he's the talker, Kellen. You don't hear much out of him, but old Braden, son, he's going to talk. And all of a sudden, Billy looked at him and said, what's wrong with you, Braden? You're not talking very much. And he went, because I'm afraid I'll puke. <laughs> had, I mean, he had paper hanging out of his nose both sides. And you know what? That's what happens to people when they have spiritual things going on in their life that's not setting well with them, they come to the house of God. The living bread of life is in the oven cooking in the house of God. It is a fresh smelling aroma to all those that are trusting him. But because some people allow themselves to get out of the will of God, they come into God's house and it bothers them. I'm preaching better than this bunch as amen. I can tell you that. And so we come in and we feel nauseated when the preacher begins to preach or the spirit begins to move in the service and people begin to shout and it makes them uneasy. Makes you want to leave. Got to get out of here. Feeling nauseated. Whenever God's saying no, you know what the problem is. You need help. You need to get in the altar. 
You need to go to the spiritual ER. Right here it is. It's open. Not going to cost you a dime. It's already been paid for. That's all I'm going to say about that. Weak sheep. When you've had a virus, you're weak. Can't do anything. You have no energy. You can't go. The sheep that are sick, they can't climb mountains. They get to where they can't walk at all. But now let me talk about wounded sheep. Wounded sheep. Doesn't take very long for you to be a sheep, whether you're a young lamb or an old old lamb, for you've been hurt. Now we're gonna go from laughing to crying right now. I'll tell you something. It doesn't take long for spiritual people who are trying to do God's work and trying to trying to follow the Spirit of God, but some other sheep butts in and bites them. And hurts them. Or some hireling, as in the scripture, misleads them. And they're trying to follow God. They're trying to walk that path of righteousness. That that one that's supposed to be leading them. But they're a hireling. They don't care. I've read where a hireling will take sheep. And the sheep are thirsty. And the sheep will will come. and, and, And the hireling will let them get a drink. And then take the rod or the staff. And pull them or push them out of the way. But a shepherd will flood their cup and let them drink till they are content. The shepherd leads them to green pastures, but the hireling don't care if they eat or not. They're hired out for a little while. They don't love the sheep. And so many of them in our churches today across this world, they've got hirelings trying to lead. They've got people that don't really care about them. They want a paycheck. They, they, just, they just want something for themselves. They want the light. They want the fame. They, they want the fortune for themselves in some places. I read the other day an, an, an article. And I'm not even going to call his name. I'll let God deal with him. Whenever a man that claims to be a pastor that has more people than anyone in the country attending, claiming to be a pastor, attends an LGBTQ rally. Now, I want to tell you something. I've got a problem with that. I've got issues with that. You know why? Because that is a hireling. That's someone that doesn't care. When people neglect to tell people the truth, neglect to attend things that are righteous and holy and take a firm stand when you are posed with a question about sin. Let me tell you something. If something ever happens and you hear your preacher never stand up for the scriptures and I support or compromise or condone sin, somebody get me out of the way. Somebody come and confront me and tell me you're wrong. I don't even know if a man like that could even be reached. And you know what's happening? The sheep that are under his voice, wounds. Wounded. Somebody, somebody tried to cover it up and said, well, What if he was there to pray for them? Would you want me going down to the bar and the strip joint with a beer in my hand praying for them all? No, what hath light with darkness? You don't do that. You don't go there. No, listen, I'm going to tell you something. We better be careful in the day we're living in. I ain't even got to my sermon for today yet. We better be careful what we say and what we do and where we go as God's people. I'm not saying like Jesus, and I know some little smart aleck out there will say, now, Jesus, he was with the the winos and the wine bibbers, and he was there. Yes, he was, but he wasn't condoning what they were doing. 
He was preaching unto them. He was, listen, if you can go down to the bar and you can get up there and tell, open up the word of God and stand there and tell them how much Jesus loves them, how much he cares for them, how he died for them and wants to save them out of this mess, let me tell you something. I'd be all right with that. Matter of fact, I'll pray for you. I went into a crack house one time. I went into that crack house and I told every one of them, I said, every one of you are going to go to hell. Every one of you are going to hell. People are dying. People were wounded. A 13-year-old girl hung herself in the yard where this crack house was and they didn't even care. People begged me, don't you go. You'll get killed down there. And I said, I don't care. God told me to go. I went down there and told them, every one of you are going to hell if you don't get saved. But if you get saved, I want you to know there's a God that loves you. He died on the cross for you. He'll deliver you from your addiction. He'll lift you out of that sin, out of that muck, and out of that mire. That's the power of the God I serve. Listen, you might say, well, you're bragging on yourself. Hey, I couldn't have gone by myself. I wouldn't have done it. God sent me. God tells us to do things sometimes that are hard, difficult, out of our comfort zone. And I'll tell you, when you get wounded, you're out of your comfort zone. It hurts. Somebody says something to you at church, you don't want to go back. Somebody aggravates you, you don't, you don't want it, you don't want it, you know you're going to see them again. We don't like seeing people that upsets us. Can I get a witness? We don't like that when people talk about us and say things about us and accuse us of things we hadn't done and then you got to go and smile and shake their hand. Ah, no, I don't like it. It's a wonder I ever show up. Was it Abraham Lincoln that said you can make part of the, some of the people happy part of the time and part of the people happy some of the time, but you'll never make everybody happy all the time. It's not going to happen. Wounded sheep. What wounds sheep? You know, if you notice a sheep that's reluctant to get up, it's because of pain. If you see a sheep that takes a long time to lay down, it's because of pain. And if a sheep cannot relax, it's under stress. And if they're grinding their teeth, it's another common sign. If they're grinding their teeth, it's a sign of pain in that sheep's life. You know what we as people do? We, we grind our teeth too. We grind our, I grind my teeth every night. I've had them build up and build up. Why? Stress. Strain. Worry. We can't help it. We try to, but we, we give it to God and then we take it back. We give it to God and we take it back. We give it to God and take it back. Am I all alone in this? We try and we try and we try and we try. No wonder God relates us to sheep because we're so similar. But then the Bible says there's a wolf. And the Bible says about this wolf, the wolf coming, the hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. Let's examine briefly the wolf. The wolf, he attacks, his attacks are deadly. His surprises are crafty. His hatred of Christ is in place. His hunger to devour is unmatched. And his attacks are under darkness. Wolves are opportunists. They, they test their prey. They sense for weakness. Stay with me a moment. Vulnerability through visual cues and even through their hearing and scent. 
They're looking, they're listening, they're smelling for something in the sheet that is weak where they can come and wound them and try to kill them, devour them. I want to tell you something. He knows everybody's weakness. White, black, yellow, red, blue-eyed, brown-eyed, slant-eyed, blind-eyed. doesn't matter. He's looking. And that wolf is looking and he's watching. And that wolf has got his snout in there, and he's sniffing, and he's listening. And if he can get you to live in fear, and if he can try to get you to run, because that is what every wolf desires. I'm going to get you to run. And if he ever gets you to run, you risk being wounded and possibly die because it is a game to the wolf. You better be glad you ain't got a hireling. You better be glad you got a good shepherd, a chief shepherd, a great shepherd, and a coming shepherd. And the first time he came as a a lamb, but the next time he'll come as the lion of the tribe of Judah. The first time... (laughs) He came was different. The first time he came, he came as a babe. But the next time he comes, he'll come as a man of war. We've got a shepherd. (laughs) Oh, my. The first time he came to a cross. But the next time... We'll crown him king of kings and lord of lords. The first time, the first time he came to wear thorns. But the next time he comes to sit on a throne. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Oh my. The wolf. It's very difficult to stop a wounded sheep from dying. The reason being is the wolf, he, he will know which one is injured. And it won't be able to keep up with the other sheep. You ever seen anybody wounded in God's house spiritually? And they can't keep up with the rest of the sheep? How do you notice that? They start missing. They start missing that Bible time. They start missing that prayer time. They start missing services. They start missing And when they start missing, they can't keep up with the rest rest of the flock. And that's when the enemy watches, he isolates, and he steals, he kills, and he destroys. See, there's some times in my life that I look back over and I was injured. I don't like injuries. I don't like being hurt. I don't like crying. Not hurt crying. I like happy crying. (laughs) But I don't like laying down. And my sleep evading me. My heart broken. My pillow wet with tears. Wondering, good shepherd, are you there? Seen my wife hurt over the years. I aggravate the fire out of her. But I love her. She's not even in here to hear it, but I love her. I've seen people when I first started pastoring hurt her. Speak things to her. Tell her she wasn't doing her job. She wasn't good enough. Well, you're the pastor's wife. You should have already done this. My wife didn't know exactly what to do in certain situations. She was a young woman. You know what I found? I found that not one of those people that condemned her for not doing things ever offered 
to help her. Didn't ever offer with twin babies crying for two and a half years without stopping with sickness in and out of the hospital, sleepless nights. Not one of those wolves ever came and said, may I help you? You know, and, they're, they're, and I didn't handle things right either. I said, you got to be humble. Just, just take it. Don't say anything. Wouldn't happen now. <laughs> I've grown in grace. Amen. <laughs> I'm her covering. I thought about ministry hurt. This might be all I get to. How many of you were here in 2010? If you remember, we had a young girl in the church who had been on vacation with Leslie and Jason's family. Thirteen years old. Come back. We were having a three-on-three basketball competition. Kids were there from everywhere. We had kids come. We were doing a little three-on-three and making a little money for our youth group to do some things. And never forget they came over to the gym and said, Jesse's sick. We all went over to the hospital. And she'd bruised and got a bad report. And she was diagnosed with leukemia, acute myeloid leukemia, on June 26, 2010. Just five short months, we'd go to the hospital. I remember walking. Up and down that hall. Little pale kids with their hair gone. Parents looking everywhere for one ounce of hope. Death all around. Praying, a church committed to prayer. I would have given my life to have said that that girl would be healed of cancer. We asked, we touched in faith, believing. But then on November 25th, At age 14, Jesus walked inside Children's Health Care of Atlanta, took her by the hand, and took her to a better land. I didn't like it. I still don't like it. My heart broke. My faith nearly shattered. I'll be honest with you. I didn't know that I'd ever be able to preach again. We had been been asked to pray for one specific thing. And that was that no residual cell of cancer be in her body. Did you know that the report came back? That girl did not have any cancer in her body at all. There was none there. But because of the complications of the medicine that she was was given, her body couldn't take it. God answered our prayer. It wasn't like we expected, but God answered the prayer. I don't know why God chose to take her. But I do know that he's the giver and the taker of life. And after a few months of praying, let me tell you something. I had to be like Job and lift up my hands and look up toward heaven and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. But you know, through that damage, through that wound, her parents are not in church. Other people that attended here could not handle it 
are no longer a part of this congregation. Wounded. And the wolf knows the wounded. Very few sheep live after they've been wounded. And I want to tell you today, no matter what kind of wound that you've had, no matter how deep, no matter how bad it hurt, let me tell you something. I know the healer, Jehovah Rapha, God my healer. I know the one who will pass by. He will pour the oil of gladness in your wound. He will bandage you up. He will carry you when you can't walk. He'll breathe for you when you cannot breathe. He'll love you when you don't feel loved. He'll hold you. He'll caress you. He will kiss you and love you. He is is the good shepherd, my friend. He is a healer. He carries with him the balm of Gilead. Thanks be unto God, there is a balm in Gilead and it's still best applied by the hand of our good shepherd. Wolves. Wolves normally just don't kill or injure one lamb. I read where two wolves killed 176 lambs and Idaho Falls in one night. Come on, band. Listen to me. As I close, uh, unlike wild animals, domestic sheep and cattle mostly panic and run. Exactly what wolves want their prey to do. In fact, in a few instances, we've seen something called sheep wrecks. If you're writing stuff down, write that down. Don't put your pen up yet. Sheep wrecks. Where sheep panicked by the presence of a predator. And they stampede into an obstruction or a downhill and literally stack on top of one another. And many of those animals suffocate and die or are injured. In the time of the gold rush in California, a man, he left England and he went to California for the diggings. And month by month, he spent, sent money to his wife and children to come join him. And finally, they arrived safely in New York. And there they took passage in one of the beautiful Pacific steamers. And a few days after sailing, the terrible cry of fire, fire, rang throughout the ship. And everything that the captain and the sailors could do was done. But it was of no use. The fire rapidly gained ground. As there was a powder magazine on board, the captain knew the moment that the flames reached that powder that the ship would be blown up. And so he gave the word, lower the lifeboats. You know, I think in the time we're living in, I believe that God's telling the angels, lower the lifeboats. I never thought I would see a country in the shape that it's in right now. It hurts me to know that pastors... And deacons and Sunday school teachers are leaving the word of God and teaching fables, giving games and gimmicks and not caring for the sheep. The captain said, lower the lifeboats. Some went out, but there was not room for all. The strong pushed and left the weak to their fate. And at the last, there was a mother, that one that had left England. She was holding her boy. They were on the deck and she pleaded to be taken. The sailors agreed to take one, but not both of them. The mother kissed that boy took him by the arms and lifted him down to that lifeboat and said, son, if you live to see your father, tell him I died to save you. 
That was great love. But yet it is faint compared to what Christ did for us. Aren't you glad that Jesus took our place on the cross in John 15, 13? Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. And in the next verse, he said, I am your friend. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, for those of you that are weak and for those of you that are wounded today, here's what God's Word says. My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. Now listen today. There's some of you that are weak and there's some of you that have been wounded. And right now, why don't you just say, you know what? That preacher's right. I'm weak, I'm wounded, I need help. Why don't you come right now? Kind Jesus, Lord God, move in this place. God, we ask you now, Lord, we know that there's some that's weak. God, they've not been faithful to the things you call them to be. And God, they're struggling. And God, there's some here, Lord, that Father, they've just been wounded. The the wolf wounded them. And they're hurting and they need help. They need healing. God help. They're going through a tough time. Sickness has attacked. Death has attacked. Oh, and their hearts are hurting. God, bring healing. Lord, right now, those that are unsaved, may they be saved today. God, we ask it now in the name of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Ghost, and all God's people said, as we stand together, as some's already moving. Listen, you other sheep come and help these sheep that are praying. Come on. All over this house, in the balcony, on the main floor, you know that you need some help from the Lord. Come on. Come on, get strength that you need. Come now, come today. Come today. I need some ladies right here with this young girl. Daddy passed away last week. Baby passed away. Need some women of God to lay hands on her and help her. Come on. Weak, wounded. We've all been weak. We've all been wounded at some time. Young people, God's talking to you today. God's speaking. God's speaking to you. Would you come? Would you come? He knows. He knows. He knows your heart. Yes.
the good shepherd. He giveth his life for his sheep. Oh, he loves you today. And we're in a we're in a place today. This is our fold right here. Could you just grab the hand of the person next to you? Just if you can, grab the hand of the person next to you. Listen, we need to pray one for another. We and we need to praise the Lord. Listen, there's a lot of hurt in here. Listen, I honestly believe that God could only do half what he wanted to do today. Only half because people wouldn't receive what the shepherd was calling them to do. Listen, he loves you that much. He's already done everything he could do for you to have salvation, to have healing. All that hurt that we deal with and that we have hid up in our hearts. Oh, he's, he's the mender of a broken wing. Oh, he loves you. Worship him a little while. Yes, God. I worship you. Yes. I worship you. Thank you, Jesus. You are here. Moving in our Thank you, God. I worship you. Worship him. I worship you. You are here. Thank you, God. Working in this. Praise place. the Lord. I worship you. I worship you. Jesus, Lord, we come before your throne of grace right now. 
God, I speak healing, Lord, and hope and protection among these that are here. God, we praise you right now. God, I pray that you cover us, Lord, with your Holy Ghost Spirit. Lord, I pray that you help us. God, help us not to live in fear, Lord, but for us to live in faith every day. God, I ask you, Jesus, that we not live under the oppressive spirit of anxiety, but Lord, but under the hand of the Almighty. God, I ask you right now, Lord, that you build a fence of angels around your sheep in this pasture. And God, that nothing, nothing evil or wicked would come nigh our dwelling. And God, that we would live the abundant life that you have for your sheep of your pasture. God, right now, we ask it in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the sweet, sweet Holy Ghost Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. Sing on, Luke. Oh, give Him praise. Hallelujah. You are here turning lives around. I worship worship you you are here turning lives oh my. I worship listen our ordained is coming around right now we need I worship we need it's right behind that speaker brother. We, we need the power of the Holy Spirit upon Mary Lou right now she's, she's having some mental trouble awful time devils attacked attacked her mind how many of you believe that God's able to heal that mind right now in the name of Jesus praise God church come together keep singing Lucas keep singing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost right now God we pray for Mary Lou God we speak right now in faith God we speak
Sing it again. Oh, we make a miracle work. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who She just said, you know, sometimes our hurt's so deep that we can't accept God's, God's word enough and the healing because of fear. She reminded me, perfect love casteth out fear. <laughs> oh, glory. <laughs> He's a way man. Has he performed a miracle in your life? My God. <laughs> Be reminded of what he's done for you. <laughs> oh, glory. Sing it, Luke. Sing it with power. Thank God. Come on, church. We may. up tonight. Kyle, would it be alright if I preach again tonight? I'm trying for four weeks to finish this message. Listen, I'm just going to tell you, you don't want to miss. You don't want to miss. The last point, I feel like i got to preach it. I'd preach it right now if I knew y'all would stay. And I know some of you, them lambs are hungry. You say, hey, you feel bad. <laughs> Spiritually Good. <laughs> physically bad. Oh, we love you. Thank you for being here. What a great week of Bible school. Listen, I want you to give an applause to Bethany Stalkup and her staff for what she did this week. Unbelievable, 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 unbelievable. I'm telling you, it was great. Every class speakers that came in spoke. Phenomenal job. Our teenagers, I'm going to tell you, I talked with a lot of the teenagers. They said, I hate it. I hate it. It's over. So it's, been, it's been the best week ever because of the speakers that came in and spoke life into them, amazing. So that's encouraging. You know, most of the time, most churches don't even have teenagers come to Bible school. Do you know that? And our teenagers got a wagon full of blessing and testimony this week. So I'm fired up over that. Lucas, you got anything? One announcement that I got. I'm going to start announcing it now. But coming up on August, I think it's the 4th, the first Sunday of August, we'll be taking up our offering for Carolina Christian Academy. So we want you to be praying now. Yeah. Uh, about what God would have you to give in that offering the first Sunday of August, and this is just a just a, just a capital campaign for them. And uh, starting next Sunday, we're going to have a month of prayer for Carolina Christian Academy. Amen. And each week, we're going to designate a, 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 a specific prayer request for you to pray for for them and for the school. And uh, so you'll hear more about that next week. But all, the first Sunday of August will be our Carolina Christian Academy offering, and we want you to be praying about what God would have you to do. In that. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Visitors, thank you for being here today. Another round of applause for them being here. God bless you. Listen, I know we went a little over time today, but you know what? I don't apologize for one bit of it. Thank God people got help today. That's what we need. 
We need help. We need healing. Amen. Let's get our hands Chris, in the air. One more announcement. Uh, parents, if you have kids in junior church, you can pick them up in the fellowship hall after dismissal. All right. Let's get our hands in the air and worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May God bless you. Be safe. See you tonight. Six o'clock.